Okay, so more probability involving dice. Rolling two dice, what is the probability of a sum of seven, or seven, or an eleven? So this is kind of like playing craps. A sum greater than nine. Now, one thing that can cause some confusion when you're looking at dice points is that the two dice can look the same, right? So I got a six here, but is a two on this die and a four on this one the same as a four on this one and a two on this one? I mean, if we're looking at the sum, they look the same. It's six either way, but obviously that's two different ways of actually getting the six. So to make that clear, I'm going to switch the color of one of the dice. We'll use a green and a red one. And we got an 8. Okay. This time we got a 10. Now we could answer these questions through empirical probability. If I just throw these dice a thousand times, write down my sums, I will get a nice idea of how likely any one of these is to come. It won't be perfect, but it will be pretty good. However, I don't think you want to watch me do that on the video, so we're going to look at this a little bit more analytically. And the thing that we have to think about, on one die, there are six things that can happen. We go one through six. And on the other one, there are six independent things that can happen. So one on this one, one on this one are different parts of our, of our puzzle. So in total, with these two dice, there are 36 things that can happen. And to encompass that, we made this little chart. So you can think of this list here as the six possible things on the red die. And this list along the top, along the row here, would be the green die. And then the sums that we're looking at are inside this box here. So if I get a 2 and a 3, I get a 5. So this gives me equally likely ways that we can have things come out with our two dice. And you'll notice there are 36 possibilities, 6 times 6. These are equally likely outcomes. Now, what does this all mean to us? And when I have equally likely outcomes, I can begin counting things up. So the probability of getting a 7, just a 7. Well, how many ways can I get a 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 6 out of my 36 ways, 1 6 of the time. A 7 or an 11. Well, what of these 36 possible outcomes meet that criteria? Those 6 plus those 2. So probability of 7 or 11 is going to be 8 out of 36. Probability of some greater than 9. Okay, so greater than, if it's just strictly greater than 9 as I've got it written, it'd be these three tens, so 3, 4, 5, 6. So the variable greater than 9 would be 6 over 36. If it was greater than or equal to 9, then we would count the 9s in as well. And from this chart, we can count whatever we're looking for. So we count the probability of whatever event it is, the count, count of that over the total count of possible, possible things. With equally likely outcomes, that'll work for us every time. 